Hi there, Geminis. Welcome to your weekly tarot reading. Um, I have a few messages that I'm going to relay first before we go into the reading. And it came out when I was shuffling the card, so I'm going to get that out first before uh, I forget, okay? Um, first off, the weird thing is, um, in the past, I've always mentioned, you know, Geminis, you guys are... Um, constantly you know you're, you're constantly trying to find your true love trying to find your calling and it's this um, energy of the opposing twins inside you that makes it really difficult for you to feel 100% content okay however I feel like the the side that wants stability has taken over possibly you know the past five years the past ten years Everything you did was very security oriented. And then the other twin that wants more spontaneity, that wants to kind of like uh, devil may care, let loose, let your hair down, um, has, has felt neglected. Okay, and then I feel like when you spend your life, you know, trying to build up the nest egg, trying to get financially stable, um, trying to do everything that's expected of you, trying to fit into a mold, trying to, you know, uphold a reputation, trying to maintain that relationship, um, trying to do everything that's expected of you. Life becomes very, very monotonous. Life becomes like just a series of events that we go through, just going through the motions. And the other twin that really wants more fun, more opportunities, more excitement, I feel like he or she feels very, very suppressed, okay? So that's the first message. And that basically means you have to find more opportunities to let the, the, the fun twin have some fun, to do something that will allow you to kind of embody both energies, otherwise, there's inner conflict. And then when the inner conflict becomes so big, I feel like it, it, it's just, you know, you're at a point where you're like, I don't get to have any fun. And then you do something drastic. You drop all your responsibilities and just, you know, head for the hills. And so Aim for moderation is what I'm saying, I guess, in a very long-winded way. Aim for moderation, okay? Aim to let your hair down. Aim to, you know, let the, the, the fun side or do the fun things in life as well. Life doesn't have to be just about the daily grind and going through the motions. It should be fun. It should be inspiring. That's why we live it. It should stir your passion and, and you know, try to moderate, okay? Work life balance with personal life balance okay um th th there is another message oh wow i am not able to retain information um there is another message here and um what i feel is um it, it deals with communication and i feel like Okay, so, okay, the, the, it's coming back out. So, let, let's say, you know, communication, a lot of it is, is not just about the words that are being said. It's also the tone, the body language, and the demeanor, and the attitude, right, that goes with it. So, everything is not just the, the message that's communicated. It's everything else that's surrounding it. So, for example, if you're on, you know, uh, if you're texting somebody and you're asking them something and it's somebody that you might not know really well, it's not somebody that, you know, can read you like a book, you want to provide a little bit more context, okay? So, for example, if you text somebody, what did you do today? They could be like, A, oh, you know, uh, they're concerned about me or they, they're curious. Or they can get defensive, they can get paranoid, like, are they checking up on me? Or do they not believe that I was out today? So, providing a little bit of context, you know, 
hey, I was just wondering what you did today. I missed you or, you know, um, I thought you might have gone to see that movie. If not, let's go to the movies together, providing a little bit of context when you communicate. And then in person, because people can read your demeanor and your attitude. And honestly, Gemini, everything shows up on your face. So I feel like if you're displeased with somebody, you know, it's going to show up on your face and you might ask them, why did you do that? And then the, the displeasure shows up on your face. So aiming to be a little bit more aware of the energy you project. Okay, that's going to go a long way. Aiming to be very careful with our tone so that we can get a, a more neutral message across. That's going to be important as well. Okay, so those are the two messages and I feel like it's coming in for this week. So they might be things that you need to kind of like, you know, be mindful of. Um, first of all, let me talk to you about how your partner sees you. I have here the Five of Wands. This is a card about conflict, competition. In a way, it could be like a, an energy that is a little bit too in our face. Like these people are um, either in conflict or talking, but they're a little bit too close. So it's it's almost like, you know, in your face, bold and brash and, and possibly quite aggressive. So your partner sees you this way. Which is weird because Geminis are not, you know, usually aggressive, but something is triggering feelings in you, passion and feelings and emotions. Your partner also sees you as someone who has a lot of suitors, okay? This is like uh, the card about competition, having a lot of competitors, having a lot of like hush, hush, uh, behind the closed doors type of conversation. So I feel like they see this and they're just like thinking that, I think Gemini is in another relationship or Gemini is in a relationship. We have here the four of wands, which is stability, home, marriage, etc. So if you're single, your love interest feels like you have a lot of potential suitors. They also feel like your energy is a little bit aggressive this week. And they also feel like you might already, you know, I'm, I keep hearing like behind closed doors type of conversations. And whatever you're doing, I feel like, you know, you might want to explain to them if, if this is somebody that you like, you might want to explain to them and, and kind of like bring them into the fold. Okay. So that way they know that you're not seeing anybody else, that you're still very much single and you're very much interested if you are interested in them. So they feel like you have a lot of, um, they have a lot of competitions and they also feel like your energy is a little bit, just a little bit aggressive which might not be a bad thing, you know, to, to go after the things that you want or the people that you want. Um, the partner that you're dealing with here, we have the Ace of Swords. This is an air energy. So it, it doesn't seem like it's a person, but the energy that they, they come across is um, air sign oriented, okay? Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. They're very, very communicative. But the, the, there is a very delicate balance between them. So it, in the way that they communicate, excuse me, not between them, there's a very delicate balance. So if you see that moon, it's like balancing on the tip of that sword. The person that you're dealing with, they're starting to communicate on a more heart and soul level. And I'm looking at the four hearts that are around the the borders, the person that you're dealing with is starting to let their guard down. They're starting to reach out to you. They're starting to reveal their emotions. They're starting to kind of like allow you to see their inner workings, allow you to feel what they feel, allow you, allowing you to kind of sense, you know, what's going on, what they're dealing with, what's going through their mind. And they're allowing themselves to be more vulnerable around you, which is great. Because this seems to me like it's the beginning of somebody opening up, letting you know how they feel, letting you know that they have a lot of love for you, letting you know that they have a lot of emotions that they might not have known how to deal with in the past, but now they know how to deal with it 
and they're going to communicate that to you. If you are dealing with a, um, an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, this is somebody who's very, very intuitive, okay? I'm hearing like emotions. I want to talk to you about my emotions. It's on the tip of my tongue and the tip of the sword, but there, there still has a, a hesitation on their end because once again, they feel like you have a lot of suitors. You might be in a relationship. So, so if you're not in a relationship, make it known, okay? They, they really do like you. How you feel about this person, we have here the Six of Pentacles. You're dealing with someone who's very, very kind. Very kind. Um, this is a card of generosity. This is somebody that is very financially stable, very established. They have a really good heart. They have a really, really big heart. They care about the homeless. They care about children. They care about sick animals. They care about, you know, the state of the world. You know, they care about pollution. They care about um, um, plastic affecting, you know, the, the uh, marine life. So they, they care about everybody and everything. And I feel like, you know, they have a really, really good soul and a really good, generous heart. And they're not like they the, the pentacle suit indicate, you know, practical application. So not only do they sit there and sob and, and talk about, you know, all the sea turtles that are injured, they get out there and get their hands dirty and they do things to alleviate these social problems. So you're dealing with someone who's just, you know, not all talk, but they walk the walk. So you have somebody that you really admire, I feel. You like their generosity. They're almost like too good to be true. And I feel like they don't just talk about things. They walk the walk and they get out there and they get their hands dirty and they get things done. And so this is a really good person here. So what's going to happen between the two of you? You're going to rush towards this person. Okay, this chariot card is about moving straight ahead. It's about narrowing your options. We go from a five of wands, com competitors, competition, to the four of wands, where you finally decide, like, this is who I'm going for. This is who I want to be with. This is who I want to build a life with. Never mind all of these other options. And I feel like you're going to be charging full speed ahead towards this person. They're really, really, they're just amazing they're in a, a very amazing soul and i feel like they really stir some deep caring feelings towards you or within you you know how when you meet someone who's really kind who, who's just like genuinely genuinely very very like just a good person and very kind it makes you like that generosity is very contagious it makes you want to do things to help them it makes you want to do things to take care of them it makes you want to you know, just like hold them in your arms and just cradle them. So I feel like this is the person that triggers these strange feelings that might ha not have been there because all the people you've dealt with in your past, they were self-serving. This is the person who's very generous and the generosity is very contagious. So I see you rushing forward, moving towards this person, which is great because, um, there's definitely communication and breakthroughs and they're waiting for you. They're waiting for you. Um, in other areas of your life, what I have here is I have a relationship. Some of you might be in a marriage situation and you're thinking about jumping ship. Okay. Scanning the horizon, scoping out to see new territories. What else is out there? because something has proven to be a very, very big burden, okay? This relationship is very heavy, is burdensome here with the Ten of Wands. I've been hanging on to it because of what it, it's, that's what's expected of me. Because of the security, because of the children, because I don't want to divide up my assets. I don't want to lose money. I don't want to rock the boat. But something in your life has proven to be a little bit burdensome. For some of you, this is work where more and more and more responsibilities are sta like dumped, dumped upon you. And we have here the four of coins. You stay in it because of the financial stability. 
you stay in it. So once again, that that other side of the twin, the the one that that um st that roughs it out, the one that sticks around, the one that is very dependable. You do it because it's expected of you. You do it because you know. It, it's a gradual process, right? Like uh, we get promoted and then we get more responsibilities. Then we get promoted and then we get responsibilities. So it gets to the point where you're starting to see it for what it is. And you're like, wait a minute. The responsibilities keep mounting. So yes, I'm getting paid more, but the responsibilities keep mounting. Is that where is my quality of life? You know, is this the smart thing for me to keep doing? keep getting promoted, but then keep losing out my free time. So I feel like you're reassessing some things. And I feel like it's in a work situation as well, where you're you're scanning the horizon. Somebody might be telling you, you know, about job opportunities. We have here the Ace of Swords, communication about new opportunities that are available for you. So they're scanning the horizon. You're scanning the horizon. And this is internet-based type of research, okay, with the Hermit card looking around, looking for opportunities. And we have here the tower. So this is sort of like realizing the truth, looking at a situation and trying to figure out, you know, I, I need to leave where I'm at because it's not entirely making me happy. It's not stable anymore. Um, I feel like there are a lot of things coming into the picture for this week. A lot of responsibilities that are handed out to you and I also feel like you're very status quo oriented for this week but I feel like towards the end of the week there will be opportunities that you know you have to go for and go for it okay um, I'm gonna pull out another card here because the tower did come out so let me just see what is this in relations to expansion new opportunities so I feel it's almost like you know sometimes we tell ourselves where I'm at is okay and these are just things that we tell ourselves to rationalize the reality of what we're dealing with to to make sense of it it's not the ideal situation and I feel like this might be the week where it's an awakening you have new opportunities coming into the picture here with the world and you have to grab them because it doesn't come around often, okay? So Geminis, I wish you guys the best. I hope the messages uh, resonate and I hope it is helpful for you for as you navigate this energy, okay? Take care of yourself and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.